called the antebellum speech, where basically, you know, the Southern Southern Cavaliers yeah. were always proud of pointing out that, hey, yeah, you like Western, like Yankee aristocrats are living on the backs of this like Dickensian capitalist experience in which you treat your workers much worse than we yeah. treat our servants. And which was, you know, maybe it wasn't true in like Mississippi cotton country, but it was certainly true in like Virginia. And um, the, the, so you're basically like looking at a situation in which either you're saying, okay, there should be no aristocrats, which is just <laughs> like this, like fucking Jonestown, you know, leveling ideology of just like pure hell. That's like Pol Pot, right? You know, or you're saying that aristocracy needs to do its fucking job. And I'm on the side of the aristocracy needs to do its fucking job. And, you know, the aristocracy really needs to be like the sort of leading element in the nation providing sort of, and one of the things why you're so uncomfortable with the state of the fucking elves is that they have like totally laid aside this function. And instead of like leading the nation into like virtue and honor and like thinking like Victorian elites, like Victorian aristocrats, they're basically thinking like Jim fucking Jones, right? You know, and, and that's true tragic you know that's a failure of like the mechanism you know that's basically this engine needs to be reconditioned but like don't confuse it for like not needing an engine and not needing an aristocracy and not yeah. needing this sort of flowering class of people who are above labor and don't get their hands dirty no they just need to not suck and the problem is they like suck so that's uh, my that's my like speech for the elves, like you know, but, like, yeah. And they need well, well, to do what some I'm at mandatory here, military service. What, what, what yeah, I'm getting sure, at here is, sure. what is it that makes the, that makes the elf like? Wait, you kind of just saying that? Well, these people just have to be in charge because they're the natural aristocrats. Well, why? I mean, I, if if they're, because, because they've succeeded they're, in, the, in they've succeeded in this system that's because fake anyone and, because no, yeah. obviously can't last. It's, it's, I mean, it's fake and it's fake and terrible, but it's also the best system that there is. Look, you know, I would prefer <laughs> my aristocrats were like Tudor fucking aristocrats. You know, I looked into this because I. Uh, did this Dime Square debate, you know, about uh, Shakespeare's Oxford, right? You probably are at Stratfordian. And and I was basically <laughs> pointing out the fucking education that if you were a fucking Elizabethan courtier, okay, is one of those supposed to like one of these like Burning Man, like quote aristocrats, right? If you're an Elizabethan courtier, like you're expected to know like fucking Latin and Greek by the age of fucking nine. Like you're spending all day, like, you know, the intensity of your like home school tutoring is like beyond fucking belief. And then in the afternoon, you got to learn to ride. You got to learn to fly a fucking hawk. You got to learn to fight with a fucking sword. And, you know, like, and fucking you can be expected to fight a fucking duel fucking at any time right you know and and you need some you scars have, on your face too by the way yeah yeah yeah, yeah. what's the thing and some not in not in england but in, in germany you've got to be a fucking badass in every direction like you know and so really what an aristocracy needs in order to flourish was you just need to be like tested and groomed and developed as a human being you know your clothes need to be like resplendent resplendent London, you shouldn't be like dressing like looking like a fucking bum you shouldn't be like your fashion right you need an amazing aristocracy okay this aristocracy that we have is not that i get that you know it has a couple of things first of all it's also a selective aristocracy so it does this thing you can argue for or against where it basically cherry picks the like smartest and best of all you know classes including crackers african americans you know first first nations australian aboriginals whatever you know and like selects the best and smartest of these people and basically takes them to be re-educated as elves you know like like you know ants adopting like a slave cast or something and a lot of the worst people in our society you know uh, my friend lomez has this term the uh, the shit lib yokel oh yeah yeah we're and, familiar and, with the breed yeah yeah, yeah, yeah the absolutely. worst fucking people like you know this magazine like the bitter southerner like there's the the, the 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 south has produced like the worst fucking shit lib yokels like basically of all mm. time like fucking forever right you know i really blame you guys for like inflicting these shit lib yokels on us and you know the mormons are no better and and yet these have every are some every of the most, community you know, college attack. 
every community college professor, every uh, you know, uh, a small town public librarian and shit. These these are all these people, and they okay, yeah, they, yeah, they yeah, can't yeah, yeah, they can't no, leave no. because they get their money yeah, from their FBLTs. You know, for, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Built in FBLTs, right? You know, and and so you know that's like I mean that's just sort of demonstrating that like this is not a culture war this is a power war and like mm-hmm. the one thing that is non-negotiable for you for the hobbits is but like basically the hobbits need to live under a power that loves hobbits it doesn't matter whether that power is hobbit power or 19 armed alien power from saturn or ai power or whatever if it loves and cherishes hobbits and wants to do right by them and loves them as hobbits, not like loves them as hobbits while wanting to turn them into something else, but loves them as who they are and even who they should be because they should be a lot better than like potato chip eating slobs on the couch, watching the fucking sec is like, that is the one requirement. There is no other requirement. So when you basically say, I'm I'm like, I think that power is most plausible if it is a power that is a also above elves. And I think it will include a significant number of basically sort of patronizing. Remember that word patronage? I think will include a significant number of basically cavaliers who are sort of above (laughs) like the crackers in their cultural sophistication and watch like movies with like subtitles and stuff. You ever do that? Watch a movie with subtitles and, and the, the, like a foreign (laughs) film. Sorry, <laughs> and and I'm condescending. That that means I'm talking down to you. And and <laughs> <laughs> sorry, it's late at night here here in California. I, it is but, like uh, do, but you know, you're, you're, I agree. I I mostly agree with you. I think that where we disagree is that I think we need to find like a cracker lieutenant colonel and um, put yeah. him in charge. And, and, the and, and I, it's my, I, I I do I love my elf friends, you included. Yeah. I think that the problem is you guys like you got to do something other than turning your kids gay and worshiping criminals. So we'll take care of you guys for a while and we'll rehabilitate you into the natural Absolutely. aristocrats that you guys should have been. Absolutely. I and mean, you know, there's somewhere like, you know, like basically it's like there are, there are Hobbit aristocracies too. And there's like a way in which there's sort of this like natural union between a certain kind of dark elf and like, you know, all the Navy SEALs in America. And, like, those values are, like, in, yeah, yeah, actually, like, you know, somebody said mandatory military service. Like, mandatory military service for hobbits is a good thing, but for elves, it's, like, fucking necessary, right? You know? And yes, yes. Like, you know, the yes. best this thing, is- you know what the best thing that available to elves are is, is that's, like, not that, is fucking team sports, you know? And, and like, yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I'm a nerd. I never did any of that shit, but, like, my son is a soccer player. You know, he is a competitive soccer player. He plays with the real soccer teams, the kind you have to fucking try out for. And, like, Hell it yeah. is so good for him. Hell yeah, right? You know, and, okay, it's soccer. It's like this gay European sport, right? You know, like, um, I wouldn't have him play football because it might, like, you know, reduce his IQ, you know, too much or some fucking bullshit like that. But, like, yeah, it's still, like, a paramilitary endeavor, and he goes out and gets hurt and hurts people. Right. And that is a super necessary base. Right. So, you know, the, the sense of like the need for that element is really, you know, entirely present. And, you know, it's like once you sort of, and, and that's another thing is that basically when you sort of align these virtues and you align kind of the virtue of like rustic power with like, it's like that kind of, union where you can't even like that's like old rome old rome is like basically like you know the army is made up of 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 sturdy virtuous peasants and there are sturdy virtuous peasants and like the sturdy virtuous peasants you know um are all are all literate Mm -hmm. and you know and and the the um you know, the gentlemen are all, they can be senators, they can be generals, you know, they know how to fight in war. And you get to late Rome and like these careers are like rigidly separated and the armies are all like mm-hmm. basically barbarians. And the, the, you know, the gentlemen are all like biggest dickus and like speak only lisps and, uh, 
you know, they're all gay, you know, and, and, you know, this, <laughs> the stereotype of this disunity has taken place. And, you know, when you unify sort of the things that are kind of most beautiful and powerful, not just about Elf America, Hobbit America, Black America, Mexican America, you know, um, um, whatever, they all have, you know, something to contribute. And you get something that's actually kind of beautiful and wonderful and kind of suitable for all of these people without trying to like ground them into like one mash. And the whole principle, you know, assumption of like, oh, either like blue America or red America will win is just like, well, you know, the meaning of the future is that everybody's grounded to a single mash. And what color is the mash? Is it red mash or blue mash? Yeah. I'm like, I don't believe, I don't believe in this, like, you know, mash theory at all. Right. You know, and, 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 and so like, that's the spirit in which I kind of regard like the Hobbit versus elf thing. Does that maybe make a, maybe a little more sense than what I posted originally, which I know, you know, y'all objected to a little bit. Yeah. Oh, let's, yeah. Let's all- I would say okay. So one thing, the military thing makes everything easier. And you know, you ever heard of uh, you know yeah. they have OCS, they have officer yeah, training. Yeah, of course. Stuff. Yeah, I've I've heard that like they don't most of the time they don't really believe that you they don't really believe that you can train someone to to it's basically elf school, right? And to be yeah, the, to exactly. be the elf, you you have to be able to look at a guy and say you got to go over that hill, you know, uh, yeah. in the way of fire. And th- basically they just like at the beginning, the beginning classes are like, do you have it or you don't? Because it's not really, uh, they can't really yeah. train you. It's, it's not command really that. Presence. The mili- command presence. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the Ooh, military, yeah. the military is a nice way for that because, you know, you have the whole officer thing. They sort of, uh, they have a lot of, uh, uh, honor and telling the truth and these things are sort of important there it was so nice to be there's able a lot to, of value uh, that's uh, there's, there's a lot of value that's still there there's a lot of use that can be made of these people it's very true yes now what what could like all great what could we do to make the the elves lives easier i mean the obvious thing is to make <laughs> now uh, to make it so there's a lot less elves one of the problems <laughs> that, that, that makes one of the problems that makes elf life so uh 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 they're so scared and, 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 uh, they, they don't like, if you're uh, like, if you were an elf in, uh, I, one of my, one of my good friends, uh, in high school, his, he, he was an elf and, um, yeah. his dad was a U.S. Senator and his dad could uh-huh. get you into, could get you into college with a phone call. I don't yeah. think that exists anymore. And so there's yeah. too many people sort of expiring for elfdom and this makes elves very scared and, um, yeah. Uh, aggressor. Do we agree with this? Yeah, elves have always been, you know, aristocrats have always been scared of those they rule over. You know, you're a small percentage of the population and they can just like come to your house with pitchforks and you'd be done. And like, you know, elves are just like, they're like constantly have this like events, like they're like, you know, they need like Xanax or just imagining like these tips of these like Home Depot pitchforks, like just like piercing them and piercing them and piercing them. Right. You know, and you know, that dealing with that paranoia and that's a huge part of like the basis of their like political energy they're really motivated by fear and the worse that they sort of perform the more like awful they become the fear kind of merges with a kind of guilt where they like know that they've done awful things they know actually they deserve to be just like stabbed with these horrible pitchforks and like like pinned to the ground you know and just this like you know or like, you ever watch Africa Adio, great old Italian movie? There's a scene where they kill an elephant with spears, right? You know, that's the fear that these people awesome. have, that they're just like, awesome, right? You know, that they're just going to be like stuck like pigs, right? <laughs> by these like totally uneducated, like Archimedes killed by like the Roman soldier, like people they can't even talk to because they're so primitive. Yeah. Maybe they have no language at all, these peasants, right? You know, and, and, well, yes, you know, they but, can but now read, so many people. You know, they, now they, so many people go to tales. college. Yeah. Now so many people go to college. So many <laughs> people are trying to get these these jobs and stuff. There's this elite overproduction yeah. thing, and that Absolutely. that sort of makes it's a serious uh, it, problem. It, it, now, I mean, of course, about- colleges, and colleges, right? You know, it's not like you know, but yeah, I mean, you know, at every level, there's still an. Elite they didn't all go to Brown. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, that, you know that, there's that, like that, Oklahoma or whatever, right? You know, I I wear that that's an accredited institution that like you know, like technically issues the same degree, right? You know, but the thing is at every level, there's a lead over production. And, you know, that's a huge fucking problem. And the question of how to govern the elves properly and how to like 
make all of these like people with the fucking humanities degrees like useful in some sense is a really hard and interesting problem because you can't just kill them. You guys like it's just like no. like the smell, no, but, right? You know, but but like you know, it's like it's just and, no, I mean, but like this, this this Twitter that that Elon's walking to. Some of these people are going to be, uh, as they say. And so you know, they're going to be proletarianized. We don't have yeah. enough. If 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 anything <laughs> happens, right wing at all, good. Uh, we won't have ten million. Uh, you know, gender advisors and and DEI <laughs> people. These people are going to be proletarianized. No, they're going to be no, stacking, yeah, yeah, stacking yeah, yeah. No, cans no, of dinty no, more. No, 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 no. They're they're going to be like you know running like artisanal like goat farms. They're going to be like you know like every like Bennington graduate like wants to like you know marry marry you know a, a lesbian wife and like move to Vermont and run like a goat farm where they make artisanal goat cheese like you know and if like your 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 goal to be consumed by other elves and if you're like you know there needs to be basically a whole elf economy which is sort of has this is runs on this kind of dignified elf labor and you know um say what you want about lesbians but if you're like making goat cheese rather than castrating my son like i think that's a victory and so, you know, do you know James, James Branch? Do you know James Branch Cabell? Uh, vaguely, he was a Southern aristocratic fantasy writer uh, from the early yes. part of the 20th century. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, you know, when I was reading about him, I was, you know, you could really see a, a, a like this guy was very, very elven. You know, he he traveled yeah. the world. He 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 spoke he spoke Greek. He taught uh, he taught Greek. You know, however, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, this he, was, he old, was a this was the old Southern aristocracy. Have you read Richard Reavers, The Southern Tradition at Bay? You know, like really, you know, it's sort of easy to confuse this like antebellum aristocratic tradition with like. 1890s cracker sort of Jim Crow politics and they're really like populist cracker politics and they're really like very different things. You know, James Branch Cabell was like, it wasn't a first families in Virginia or whatever, you know, yes. the man, yeah. the man was an aristocrat. And, you know, when you look at the Southern, the real Southern elite, like the tidewater elite, like, you know, in the 1840s, 1850s. Yeah, these guys, they, you know, they, they spoke Greek or Latin, you know, they conducted science experiments. You know, America's first great oceanographer, Matthew Morey, was a Southerner. You know, it was just, it was a much smaller intellectual aristocratic community, um, you know, and of course, uh, obviously, uh, you know, lamentably, I mean, uh, you know, theories of uh, scientific racism, you know, found their, found their way into this group hmm. of people, but they were very well educated, you know, and yeah, you but know, they, just, they just, were, they weren't stuffy or anything like that. They were very, I mean, they, uh, you know, he wrote hmm. scandalous, he wrote scandalous books. Uh, you know, there was this, there was a scandal where the New York, this is perfect. The New York society for the suppression of vice tried to, to take hmm. him to court for write, writing a book with, you know, that was, uh, you know, had, uh, uh, you know, sex scenes or cuss words or whatever. These guys yeah. were, they weren't, they weren't, uh, you know, they weren't stick in the mud kind of guys. Oh, yeah, you know, they, yeah. No, they were, they, were, they, were, they were very elven. They were more human, you know, they were basically, they were aristocrats, right? And and sort of the death of the Southern, you know, the death or kind of conversion of the Southern aristocracy so that you basically... And, and, you know, this guy's son and grandson probably went to Harvard and became shit libs, you know, and, and yeah. I'm sure they were very good shit libs. You know, that's sort of part of the origins of the shit lib yokel. And, and, you know, the sort of the seduction of these, these local elites, because they weren't killed, they were like seduced. Again, that comes out of like, you know, Harvard seduced them because Harvard was the most powerful. If the Germans had won the war, they would all become Nazis and gone to Berlin to go get educated, right? You know, yep. and and that's just how power works. You know, it's like there was a, there's an Arab philosopher, um, oh um, Osama bin Laden, who said that when people see a strong <laughs> horse and a weak horse, by nature they follow the strong horse. And right, I'm just like. Okay, so be as strong as possible. This is really, really uncomplicated stuff. And can you recreate those aristocracies as well as sort of like you have a whole job of social reconstruction to do here. Your society 
for any real power inheriting the United States. Like the elves have problems, the hobbits have problems, the dwarves have problems, the orcs have problems. These are all like very, very troubled peoples that need like a lot of help. And <laughs> they need help in like very different and special ways, but like they really all need help. And the like that help has to come from, you know, a power that has to be one power and that one power has to love and care about them as much as a government of only hobbits would love and care about hobbits. And I know you feel that that's almost unimaginable, but you know, history shows it's possible. It's just the recent history doesn't show it's possible. You and know what's going to happen now? Vox is going to put out an article saying fascist political philosopher Curtis Jarvin praises Osama bin Laden on all my <laughs> podcasts. That's what's going to happen. We're all going to become fa- we're we're going to become famous now. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, that's great. They're going to be treated. We as, already, as, as, yeah. Sorry we already are, so the last the last interview we did with you uh, ended up uh, in Vanity Fair. Uh, that was the. Uh, by I bought the way, a copy for my mom. By the way, thanks, uh, thanks, yeah, Curtis. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, by yeah, the way, yeah. uh, we get credit right here for Lord Yarvin, which the article said people were using that in halls of power and stuff. They're like, "You're Lord Yarvin." <laughs> yeah, I don't think so, but uh, I, I, you know, the, the, uh, it guess just goes to show you that that good people come, 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 and come in all all types. Even even some journalists are. Uh, all right, some of them are good people, as uh, as, as a great American once said. And um, the uh, yeah, 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 and um, the um, I don't know. Uh, it's been it's been great fun. I should probably. It seems my network got a little better. I should probably uh, kick it off and say good night because we've been uh, recording for about three hours here. Oh, yeah. Are you going to condense this down? Or are you going to give people the? You know, it's unfiltered glory. I think I use a lot of like cuss words. Like I think I said fuck at one point. Is that okay? <laughs> you guys you know, have an FCC issue here. Can we say fuck? Yeah, you're allowed <laughs> you know? to. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we, that's we good. That's good. It, yeah. that's good. That's uh, good. That's good. That's good. That's good. All right. All right. I'm, uh, well, it's been it's been a huge pleasure, and uh, we'll see what the future brings uh, to Twitter. Um, I'd be surprised if Elon listens to this podcast, but. Uh, <laughs> course you never know he'll certainly be scandalized and um the uh but i don't think we said anything politically correct um no the great gray mayor no. gray mayor.substack.com and i have to ask you a final question gray mayor.substack.com uh that's where you can find his writings you need to subscribe there that's uh, gray with an a the american way <laughs> absolutely final question uh the the big question are you going to start a twitter account I'm 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 actively considering it. Let's see where it goes, but I'm considering. Hell yeah! It. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Hell yeah! Let's go. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Let's All right. Go. Thank, All right. Thank-